We are now going to go through the model of the heart. Um, we're going to begin with the epicardium. On your list, the pericardial sac and the pericardial cavity are not represented on this model. So we will begin with the third item, the epicardium. The epicardium is the layer, uh, on the, the most superficial layer on the heart. So on this model, it would be the covering of the heart. This would be epicardium. This would be covered with epicardium. Um, next, we'll go to the chambers of the heart. First, we'll look at the right atrium and the right ventricle. From the exterior, we're looking at the right atrium and the right ventricle, the left atrium and the left ventricle. Now I'm going to open the model up. We okay. Um, so here we have the uh, chambers of the heart uh, with the model open. We've got the right atrium, the right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. Um, next we have the uh, ventricular septum. Well here we have the two chambers so here's the wall between the two. This wall that my fingers um, are holding here is the ventricular septum. Then uh, externally between the two uh, ventricles, there is a groove. Now you can't really see the groove on this model because it has blood vessels lying in it. Right where these blood vessels are, there would be a groove, and that is called the interventricular groove or sulcus. Um, when we, uh, we talked about the epicardium, the epicardium is the uh, most superficial layer. The muscle of the heart is the myocardium, so here would be a representation of the myocardium, and then the lining of the heart, or the most superficial layer lining the heart, is the endocardium. So there would be endocardium in here, there would be endocardium in here, in all of the chambers, lined by endocardium. All right, now let's take a look at some uh, great vessels that are attached to the heart. We'll begin with the uh, vena cava. We have um, a vena cava, which is a large vein draining the blood from the superior part of the body. That is the superior vena cava right here. This is the representation of the inferior vena cava draining the blood from the uh, inferior part of the body, the trunk and the legs. Um, within the atrium, right atrium, we can see representations um, of the openings to the uh, vena cava. So up here would be uh, where the superior vena cava enters the heart. Right here would be where the inferior vena cava enters the heart. And then there's a little red dot right here on the model. That represents where the blood from the coronary veins or cardiac veins re-enters the heart. So we have here uh, an opening from the coronary sinus right here that little red dot. Um, within the uh, atria, we find some ridging, ridge-like uh, muscles, or kind of a, a ridging of the muscles. That's called pectinate muscle. So there should be a representation here and here in the atrium, uh, the pectinate muscles. That allows a little bit more expansion in the atrium as it fills with blood. Um, next, we go to the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve is found between the right atrium and the right ventricle. So here is the representation of the tricuspid valve or the right atrial ventricular valve. Um, we also have um, on your list next are, um, are the chordae tendinae. The chordae tendinae are the little heart strings that attach from the valve to the myocardium of the uh, ventricle. So here's a chordae tendinae re representation of the chordae tendinae right here. They keep the uh, valve tight. Next on your list is the moderator band, and the moderator band is not represented in the model. So you have to worry about that only in the dissected beef heart or sheep heart. Um, the pulmonary trunk, another great vessel, the pulmonary trunk is found right here. 
The blood leaves the right atrium through the pulmonary trunk, which then goes up here and divides into left and right pulmonary arteries. Um, there is a semilunar valve between the right atrium, I mean the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk. So uh, mm. right here these little white representations are the pulmonic semilunar valves. Now we'll look for the pulmonary veins attached to the left atrium. Here we see the pulmonary vein, these two red vessels attached to the left atrium. Um, there's two, and over here we find two on the right side of the heart, but it is attached to the left atrium. This whole area is the left atrium. And in here, within the left atrium, you can actually see the entry points of the two pulmonary veins here, and the two pulmonary veins on the other side there left atrium. Um, let's see. Next we have um, the bicuspid or the left uh, atrial ventricular valve that allows blood to pass from the right atrium to the, I mean the left atrium to the left ventricle. Blood leaves the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve and there is a representation right up here under here of the aortic semilunar valve. Blood then passes into the aorta. So here we have the aortic arch. Here's the ascending part. Here is the arch. And then here would be the descending aorta on uh, this model. Um, there is uh, a remnant of a little shunt that allowed blood in the fetus to travel from the pulmonic trunk straight to the aorta. That remnant of that little shunt is the ligamentum arteriosum. Now there are a couple of other uh, vessels that are important on this model. Uh, in the human, they are uh, in this, found in this uh, form. We have here, at, at, in terms of the blood leaving the heart, the blood leaves the heart through the aorta, it's going to move in this direction. Um, in terms of blood flow, the first artery that you come to is the brachiocephalic artery. So blood will pass to the brachiocephalic, and if you think of that name, it tells you where it's going. Brachio meaning arm, cephalic meaning head. The blood in this artery um, passes then to the subclavian artery, which is going to the arm, and the uh, common carotid artery, which is going to the head. So brachiocephalic is telling you that the, artery, the blood in this artery is going to pass to the subclavian artery and the common carotid artery. As the blood flows in the aortic arch, the next artery that the blood comes to is the left common carotid. So here we find the right common carotid and the right subclavian. Here we have the left common carotid. Next artery is the left subclavian. And on this model, there are two small little flexible uh, representations of arteries. These are the internal mammary arteries. These serve the chest wall and are important when it comes to bypass surgery. And that finishes the um, model of the heart.